guys, welcome to Be Adventures uh, and part two or section two of the travel tips. Um, I spoke so long on the first one, I'll, I'll try to be a bit more disciplined and cut it down. But um, as you can tell, my personality, I want to share this information and you know, I like talking to you guys. <laughs> anyway, um, so quick uh, disclaimer guys, none of this is absolute, none of it's perfect. Okay, use what works for you. Okay, so you don't have to buy any of this stuff. I'm not trying to sell you anything. It's just some of this stuff may help you. Um, I'm a gear guy. I like gear and I like gadgets and I like stuff. So you may be too or maybe you're not. Okay. Um, also, I mean, there is material things at the end of the day. So it's not worth you risking your life when you're traveling. Okay. I really mean that, guys. Sometimes if you've got to give up the dummy wallet, and I spoke about that in the first uh, part, give it up, you know? or if it's your camera or whatever, it's not worth your life. You know, if someone pulls a knife or a gun, okay? Um, so the, most of the things I'm gonna talk about are fairly cheap and affordable, um, and they're very easy to obtain, either in your country or when you're traveling. Um, yeah, and also a big tip, whatever gear you decide to use or get, test it before you trip, okay? I really need to stress that point because so many people will get things, it'll break on the trip or not work on the trip as intended, and then they lost that capability they wanted to have. Not the end of the world, you might, you'll probably be able to get that item overseas, you know, Philippines, Vietnam, Thailand, wherever you want to go. Um, but again, these videos are going to refer mainly to those three countries and those three trips because of uh, my travel series and they're just my most recent travel experiences. Um, okay, let's get stuck into it. This is a little, um, I don't know what you might call it in your country, this is a USB stick or memory stick. Um, yeah, a little USB key, whatever you want to call it. As you can see, I've got it on a keychain because this is a micro one. It's so small, if I don't put it on a keychain, I'll lose it. This is awesome. You can usually get them very, very cheap in any country and usually very high capacity, like 8 gig, 20 gig, whatever, you know. Usually you can get them really cheap. Um, and you can put a lot of things on these, okay. Obviously, here's a more old school example. <laughs> Look at this big boy here. Yeah, little USB. Right, USB stands for Universal Serial Bus. It just means a type of connection. Okay? Um, like I said, test them out. I bought really cheap ones and they didn't even work. It was like fake or just poor quality. Um, but the main reason why, and I talked about it especially in my Vietnam videos, uh, check them out. Um, I had photocopies or I had scanned copies of my passport, my travel visa, my hotel bookings, and my flights. Okay? All my major stuff was on there. My travel insurance as well, my travel insurance policy. So if anything happened to me, if I got injured, I've got travel insurance, my policy's on that little memory stick, okay? So one, it's paperless, um, very tough and reliable if you get a good one, uh, because there's no moving parts, okay? So something as simple as a memory stick, that could really, you know, save your butt. Um, that actually happened in Vietnam, where I went to, Vietnam's a bit strict, because it's a communist country, a lovely country by the way. Uh, I went to a hotel, I didn't have my stuff on me because I'd been traveling around jumping between cities. All I had was this, thank God. It was in my backpack, I just had it by chance. I had my travel visa, a copy of my passport, my hotel bookings, everything it was fine. So obviously the staff printed it all off and said yep, that's fine, good to go. Um, also if your passport gets stolen, that's a big one, if your passport gets stolen or damaged or lost, at least you've got a copy on here. Okay, and also have a photocopy of your passport as well, as a backup. And put it in a plastic sleeve, you know. But some of you may not want to go that far, but trust me, if you get into trouble, I know people that have lost passports uh, while traveling, and just having a photocopy really, you know, could save your, your life sort of thing. Um, okay, so, yeah, I don't want to take up too much time. Cargo pants and cargo shorts, I'm obviously wearing... I've got a model for the camera now. I'm wearing <laughs> cargo shorts, and I like cargo shorts and pants. Um, and here's a really good example. Again, you know, use whatever brand you like. These are actually really cheap. This is actually a, a moisture wicking, uh, just like a synthetic, but it dries really quick, so handy in hot, humid, wet countries. And as you can see, there's a zip. So you can actually take the legs off. Okay, you can take the legs off and turn these into a pair of shorts. Because it's a waterproof type synthetic fabric, I can go swimming in these. I can go swimming, I can walk through lakes and rivers, I'm an outdoors person, I love that stuff. Uh, if it just gets wet and sweaty, it dries out really quick. And if it gets too hot, I can cut off the legs. 
So something so simple and so handy. Also, it's lightweight. Lightweight on my body and lightweight in my luggage. As you can see, I just rolled it up. Okay, so always be weight conscious, you know, because of weight limits when you're flying, for your checked luggage and your baggage. Uh, even your carry-on will have a weight limit, okay? And just for yourself, trust me. You get all this gear, you get all this stuff, and it just weighs you down, and it just, it adds up and creates a lot of pain. This is my pillow. No, this isn't a pillow, but I use it as a pillow when traveling. This is actually an awesome jacket. You see, I'm rolling out. <laughs> I love this jacket, it's awesome. But um, you don't have to get this exact one, obviously. Um, it's basically just a rain jacket. It's a zip-up, waterproof rain jacket. As you can see, there's mesh. Really nice mesh. Great quality. Good stuff. But the point is, in all of these countries, even though they're hot, humid, tropical countries, they, um, they get monsoon weather. They rain a lot. And nothing worse than being in a hot country and you're drenched wet. So have one of these. Um, it also might be a flight or a bus or a ferry, some form of transport where they've got aircon and it gets too cold. You might want to put this on. So I always find airline air conditioning way too cold. Um, that's just me. But yeah, and obviously this one you can roll up, make a pillow. But even you can get them anywhere, really cheap, very handy. Uh, okay, really important. Comfortable, well-supported shoes. Uh, these are Keen, Keen Gypsums. Uh, obviously, again, you don't have to buy this exact type. I love this style because look how thick the heel is. Okay, that's a good sign of a reinforced, support, well-supported heel. Okay. Um, same with the toe. It's rubberized, good support, and good protection. You know, like for scuffs and bumps. But when you're carrying a lot of luggage and weight and baggage because you're traveling, it really—I don't know about you, but for me, it really hurts my legs and feet. So just having good, comfortable, well-supported shoes. Give you another example. See, these ones are not well-supported. See how you can bend them? So that's how you can tell. It doesn't even have a shank or any sort of support inside. It's just nothing wrong with it if, if your feet and your body can handle it. But trust me, it'll give you a lot of pain later. So just something to consider. Uh, oh, extra socks and underwear. I know it sounds funny. If you're taking a 10-day trip, take 11 or 12 pairs of socks and underwear. Take extra. Uh, especially in hot, humid, you know, Pacific Asia countries, everything gets wet. Trust me, your socks will get wet, your underwear will get wet, your clothing will get wet, you get sweaty. So extra socks and underwear, always important. And of course, they're very cheap. You can buy them in country. Uh, and also just, hot, you know, stop. It's more sanitary, so that way you don't stink as bad and you don't get illnesses and skin, skin issues. Uh, and that way you don't get sores and issues with your feet as well. So again, when your feet are wet, soggy, soaked, dirty socks, you can get like jungle foot, trench foot, or tendonitis, and you can get foot issues. Um, but yeah. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, backpacks, uh, obviously get one that's suited for your body shape. Um, this isn't about backpacking, so obviously if you want to do that, you'll get one of those really, really big ones. But just wanted to quickly bring it up. This is like a military style one, obviously. Um, this one has a compartment in the back for padding, right? So it has, that's why I like this one. It's also very well reinforced, okay? It's, you know, military style one, very, very tough, double stitch and all that sort of good stuff. That's got a tough bottom, but I just like that feature that the back, you can put in some extra padding. So it's for when you have all this gear and equipment, it can really rub in and dig into your back. So there's an option there. Here's the one you've probably seen in a lot of my videos when I was traveling. This is my awesome Oakley one. It's got a really good padding. Hope you guys can see that. Really good, tough, reinforced and padded straps. Really comfortable. The only problem I had with this one was the opposite. The bottom was not reinforced and the bottom started to tear and wear. So I just put in a little pad. Okay, I made this myself out of duct tape. It's just some padding. I wrapped in duct, duct tape. Obviously, you can go something fancier. But that's something I can replace or make again without issue. Um, as you can see, heaps of compartments. You know, heaps of storage, really tough, really reliable. It's just that that bottom part was ripping inside. So I had to put a padding. That's because that's my fault. I was putting so much weight in there from, from travel. I was putting so much gear and weight that it was starting to, to wear at the bottom. It wasn't really made for that. It's more of a day pack, you know, just to use on a daily basis or for lighter weight stuff. Um, okay. But yeah, you know, test out your gear before you use it, you know, and before you travel. You know, I'll say so you don't have issues later. Uh, but everything worked out fine, all that stuff. Um, also, you could have a little rolling bag, you know, like a duffel bag, you know, sort of like a, yeah.